Hello, welcome and thanks for choosing this video course. In this video, I'll be talking about how to attract high paying clients, which is a simple six steps, starting from how to propose a sale with your potential client to closing the sale. For the first step, there are two aspects that you need to cover on. Firstly is the purpose of the call and secondly, setting expectations and establishing credibility. One, the purpose of the call. When it comes to initiating a call with a client, you need to set up the purpose of the call. A good example to kick things off is saying, Hey there, client's name. I'm calling because you submitted an application to me. I get hundreds of applications a day compared to hundreds of applications that I've read, and your story is the most compelling to me. That's why I'm giving you a call back. Do you still remember submitting an application on my website? And is this a good time to talk? 2. Setting Expectations and Establishing Credibility The next thing you should touch on once your client has complied and is available to talk, you can start with setting up expectations and establish credibility about yourself to the client by saying, The reason why we have such a high success rate with the people we work with is because we take the time to really get to know them, so we have the ability to truly help them. So the way this works out is that I'm going to ask you some questions about your background and experience so I can come up with a success plan for you. At the end, we can decide if this is going to be a good fit for both you and me. Does that sound fair? Understanding the client's needs and building trust. For the second step, there are three phases that you need to go through to fully understand your client and build a mutual trust between you and the client. In the first phase, you need to know their current situation. You need to uncover what they like, such as asking, Did you watch all the videos? Even the ones on the thank you page? What is it about the video that made you want to apply? What did you like about it? Moreover, you need to understand their background and their current struggles as well by asking, I'm curious about you. What's your background? What's your story? How many hours do you currently work right now? How long have you been trying to succeed with this? Are the people in your life, your friends and family supportive of your goal? Why now? What's the biggest thing driving you to make this happen now more than ever? In the second phase, you need to know and discover their dreams and goals. What is your goal? How much do you want to make per month in the next 90 days? Then ultimately, how much do you want to be making? Repeat back what they said. Once you're making that, how would that change your life? What would that do for you? Additionally, you need to find out the obstacles that they're facing by asking, those are really good goals. Right now, what's stopping you from achieving your goals? What are your biggest obstacles, frustrations, and challenges? Thank you for sharing that. So if you solve that problem once and for all, you think you'd finally succeed? Our first goal would be to replace your income. Then the next goal would be to replace the income of your household. Right now, what would it take to replace your income because that would be our first goal. In the third phase, you need to build trust. You can start by acknowledging and reassure their decision by starting, You know what I deeply respect and appreciate about you? It's the fact that you are persistent, very persistent, and you never gave up no matter how hard it got. Also the fact that you just took action. You watched my videos, went through the entire process, and filled out the form. Most people just let opportunities pass them by, but you took action. Where did you learn that from? Were you always like that? Moreover, you should build commonalities with your client by sharing your story and relate it if possible by stating, Thanks for sharing that. I can completely relate. Now here's my story and then you share with them what you have in common and open up. Build a connection. Most of my successful clients have one thing in common. They never gave up and they always had the drive to succeed, no matter what. All they needed was a little guidance. Someone who's been there, done that, to show them what to do. So I'm excited for your success. Moving on to the third step, which is educating your clients. What you should do is basically help them by actually helping them. What I'm trying to do is give them new advice, such as success, talking about what mistakes most people make, and what you should do and why. Next, you need to put emphasis on the big reasons why people fail, such as not having a mentor and no proper guidance, lack of technical skills, and insufficient time. Additionally, you can touch on lottery mentality mindset versus business mindset. 
basically one of the big reasons people fail in their business is because they're having a lottery mindset when running their business. They are expecting good results with zero or less effort from their side. They want to grow their business, but they're not willing to invest in their business. Successful business people have a different way of thinking and a different mindset, which we call a business mindset. They understand the power of scaling. They know if they want to grow their business, they need to invest money into their business. They will not be doing everything by themselves. In fact, they'll outsource some of their work, as they know how to better use their time and leverage on other people's expertise. They don't give up easily when, at first, things don't turn out as well as they want. In fact, they'll review and change or twist their strategies until it works. If you realize your client's mindset is towards lottery mindset, then you've got to spend some time to educate him or her during the call to ensure they are having a right mindset before you lead them to the next sales process level. Pre-presentation framing. Another aspect that you should touch on is offering a formula to become successful. The formula of success basically touches on mindset, skills, mentor, and ways to get the work done for you. Now let's get on to the fourth step, which is pre-presenting framing where you need to assess your client's overall situation starting from Step 1. Qualifying and assess their commitment where you can ask about Have you ever had a mentor or coach before? How are you with following directions? If someone gives you a step-by-step -step plan, can you follow it? How many hours can you realistically put towards your internet business on a daily basis? How are you with someone holding you accountable? Procrastination is the number one reason why most people fail. How do you overcome procrastination? Step 2. Reconfirm the goals where you can touch on If we get you to achieve income goals, income in 90 days so you can experience actual goals they have, is that something you want to do? Step 3. Assess their financial budget. What would be your budget for that? Step 4. Invite them to watch the video presentation, which is the final step which you can touch on. Are you in front of your computer? I'll send you an email right now with a video link. I want you to watch. Call me back after you finish watching the video. Next to the fifth step, which is how to present your solutions effectively. Where you can touch on matters such as common mistakes that you should avoid and what is the right approach to presentation. There are various mistakes that people commonly make, such as Sending your proposal over an email and then sitting and waiting and hoping the potential buyer gets back to you, even though this may work on certain cases, but it drastically reduces your chances to win a deal. That being said, why it may reduce your chances to win a deal? Firstly, your potential client may change his or her mind while waiting for your proposal. Your potential client may forget about the values and urgency of solving the problems. Your potential client may have different interpretations on your proposal. Last but not least, they may not be able to see the big picture and ROI. Generally, the best approach is to deliver your proposal live. This allows you to get the most out of your proposal and you need to walk them through it as well. Before we jump into the solutions, there are three regular mistakes that you should avoid. First is presenting features instead of benefits. Second, did not change the benefits based on the needs of targeted audience. And last, selling the product instead of the results. To address the first problem with presenting your solutions on transforming features into benefits, features refer to the surface statements about your product, such as what it can do, its dimensions and specs and so forth, whereas benefits show the end result of what the product can actually accomplish for the buyer. Take, for example, Google Analytics. Its feature is detailed statistics tracking, and the benefit is you get to know what your readers are doing. One example of its features is writing high, converting web copy. Now, what if you can't figure out if something is a feature or a benefit? Ask why is it important to your customer. If you have arrived at an answer that even a three-year-old could understand, you found your benefit. Take, for instance, you run a freelance writing business. You have a network of other writers to whom you can subcontract. Is your network a benefit or a feature? Benefits don't always have to solve a literal problem. Some of them work on a strictly emotional level. Emotional benefits come from features that your customers make a personal connection to, not a practical connection, giving them a different reason to invest in your brand. 
Take, for instance, the feature is the handcrafted jewelry, and the emotional benefit is that nobody else in the world will have the exact same item you have. This appeals to the customer's emotional need for independence and identity. Moving on to the second problem with presenting your solutions on transforming features into benefits. The benefits need to be beneficial to your target audience, where your benefits should change depending on the needs of the target audience. Each of the potential buyer's business situations are different. They are facing different problems and they have different objectives to achieve. So you can't just present the same set of benefits of your solutions to all potential buyers and hope that they can connect the benefits to their problems all by themselves. When you present the benefits of your solutions, remember to connect it with the problems that your potential buyer is facing. Connect it with the information that you obtained when using spin selling technique. Next on to the third problem, you should be selling the results, not the product. People aren't looking for your service or product, they're looking for results. This is where your customers want to change the way they feel. They want to adjust the way they act. They have goals, they have desires, and they have dreams. To gain the trust of high-paying clients, stop selling how great your product is or the solution. You've got to show them how you can help them achieve the results that they desired. Lastly, use visuals that allow your customers to see if they are getting the results they want. Now let's move on to the script for your video presentation, starting from the opening starting phrase one, which is the opening. Step one, share some universal and truth to secure attention. Think of something that is true for you and it's universal. Example, do you want to earn more money this year than last year? Second example, have you awakened in the morning and got up from bed and felt tired? Step two, acknowledge your audience. Because they may feel skeptical at this stage and it's best to get acknowledgement from your audience. For example, I want to thank you for watching this video. This showed that you are committed to grow your business and achieve your dreams. Step three, set the expectation. What's in it for me? Here's an example. I'll do everything in my power to make it well worth your time and investment. By the end of the program, you will learn these. Step four, ask for permission to share your story. Example, since we will be spending some time together, will it be okay if I share with you a little about my background? Step five, share your expert story positioning. This is where you can share your success, your struggles, your strengths and learnings, and your beliefs. Next, on to phase two. This is where you share parts of your content strategically. Think of one main concept that you want to teach your audience. Break the one main key concept into three secrets that you're going to share with them. The three secrets are to answer the three biggest objections that your audience may have in their mind. For example, the biggest myth is, most people think, here is the reason why people find it hard. It's because, turn the common objections into three things that you will share with them. You can use third-party authority to share your content by stating, People come to ask me and how I achieve success. I'm going to share with you. Moving on to the third phase where you present your values. Stack technique means stack all the values that the client is getting by mentioning each of the values that they are getting and how much each value is worth in dollars before telling them the price. Example, in this program, you're going to have a proven script that I used to close high paying clients. This script is worth $500. When you have this script, you'll have a sense of confidence in closing high-paying clients, and it will increase your closing ratio. Also, you'll receive a one-to-one -one coaching from me for three months, which is worth $20,000. I'll also share with you my proven sales funnel, and you can just copy my sales funnel, which is worth $15,000. The total value that you're going to get from this program is more than $100,000 and you'll realize you'll make more money than your average day after the program which we have not calculated the potential income that you're going to earn. How to present the price to your client. Only tell your client the price of your services or program after they've recognized the total value that they're going to get. Here's an example. The total value that you're going to get from this program is worth $100,000, but I'm not going to charge you $100,000. As mentioned earlier, this $100,000 value has not included the potential income that you're going to earn in the next few years. Before I tell you about the price, 
Can I ask you how much are you willing to invest to enjoy this $100,000 value of stuff and the potential of double and even tripling your business? I'm going to give you a deal that most people think I'm crazy. And this deal is only for you if you sign up today as I really want to help you to succeed. After today, I can't offer you this deal with this price anymore. So please take action fast before I change my mind. The special price that I'm going to offer you is XXX dollars. Again, I can only offer you this potential deal for today only. Again, if all these values that you're getting was to enable you to double and triple your business potential, enable you to have more time to spend with your family, and enable you to earn more, even if you are not around, will that be worth it? Keep in mind the discussion in Step 1. Emphasize one benefit rather than features. If you think your product or service is in terms of how it benefits the customer, your presentation will be focused in related dialogue rather than a self-increasing monologue. Nothing is bad than a sales presentation which proceeds from the seller's point of view. This is why the needs evaluation is so important and why it will ideally flow in and out of this step. A good needs evaluation allows you to shape your presentation to your audience and keep it engaging. Next, moving on to the pre-closing stage. You can try to use some of the following closing techniques as a pre-closing in your presentation video to lead them to the closing stage. The first closing technique is cost versus value, which allows you to switch their focus on how much this is going to cost to how much it's worth. Take, for instance, how much is it worth to you if you can? Second closing technique is money is a resource, which basically means you'll spend this money anyway. Why not invest in yourself so that you can? You will able to get it back. Now, what's the one thing that you'll never be able to get back? The answer is time. The third closing technique is either way you'll still pay, which refers to you can pay me to learn from my mistakes or you can learn from your mistakes. Either way, you're still going to pay. Now, moving on to the closing stage of the sales process, there are only three phases that you need to go through with your client. Phase one is eliciting values, where you can explain about the following points. First, did you get to watch the video? What would you think? Second, if money wasn't an issue, which one of the packages appeals to you the most? Third, what is it about that package that caught your eye? Fourth, so if you had, repeat what they like, do you think you'd finally succeed? And why? That being said, repeat back to them what they like and ask them if they would succeed if they had that. Phase 2 refers to assuming the sales and setting conditions, where you can explain about the following points. First, which one of the packages did you want to do? Second, we have two conditions with everyone we work with. First, once you start seeing results from this program, are you okay with doing a testimonial for us? Second, once you start seeing results that you're happy with, will you be open to upgrading to our higher packages? Third, if those two conditions are met, then we can work together. Now, moving on to the third and final phase, which is future pacing and closing the deal, where you can touch on the following points. First, here's how it works. After you sign up, my team starts working on your stuff within one to two hours. The goal is for us to have something up and running, getting you results within seven days. In order to hit that goal you want, stuff needs to get done pretty quickly. Are you okay with us moving fast? Second, so one of the things we'll do today is start setting up your multiple streams of income. How often do you want to get paid for your commissions? Weekly, bi-weekly, or monthly? Third, do you want to get paid by check, direct deposit, or by PayPal? Fourth, what's your best email address? Fifth, what's your best mailing address? Sixth, what name should the payment be written out to? Seventh, awesome, I'm sending this out to my team right now so we can get you something set up today. So you want to use Visa or MasterCard for your payment? For more free educational content, visit learnforfree.biz. Content produced and distributed by AllSuperInfo.